Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date that will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. In 2010, more resident Ed Vesey became the last Oklahoma survivor of the USS Oklahoma, a battleship destroyed in the Pearl Harbor attack of 1941. This is his story. And there was a nice letter there from President Roosevelt inviting me to join the Navy. I thought, I haven't had a better idea proposed to me since, <laughs> since I was a kid. The idea of Going in the Navy was very, very attractive. And besides which, uh, I don't quite want to put it this way, but at that age, I was living at home, and you know, you can get enough of mom and dad and their ideas of how you should live your life. And it was easy to think in terms of going to sea with the Navy, which I did. It was pretty obvious the war was coming, and uh, it was not going to be long anyway, so. I signed up for active duty and was ordered to the, to the Oklahoma, which was at that time at Pearl Harbor. And I reported to the Oklahoma about the middle of April of 41, and uh, the rest is now public history, so, so it was a good decision. I have no regrets. It was one of those typical Sunday mornings. Uh, I had a roommate, Frank Flaherty, and we were lounging in bed still, five minutes to eight, we had a major decision to make. Should we eat breakfast and then go swimming or go swimming and then eat breakfast? That was our big decision of the day. We went from being a bunch of carefree kids with nothing to do Sunday but decide whether to go swimming or not to, to uh, completely changed in just 15 minutes. A young ensign took over the microphone. His name was Herb Rommel. He only died about a year ago. And uh, he said, this is no bleep. Man, your stations are under attack. And about that time, we took our first hit that made the ship shudder all over. So Frank and I decided, if they're going well, we'd already decided, if they're going to hold a air raid drill on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, we're going to get dressed. It was just getting about half our night pajamas off. I went to my battle station in pajama bottoms, a pair of moccasins, and my brand new cap that I just paid $17 for. Strapped on my 45, and away I went. A great way to go into battle for the first time. But by the time I got to my battle station, it was virtually all over. We'd already taken five or six torpedoes, and. We lost power, we lost everything. We, even if the guys below had been alive, they wouldn't have had any power for the, for the uh, uh, lift systems for lifting the ammunition up, so they would have had to crank them by hand. The Oklahoma was done before she ever got a chance to, to take any action, really. Uh, water was covered with oil, and you can't really swim in oil, so it's... Uh, you don't have enough buoyancy to swim. And the oil was catching was on fire just after, so it was a pretty good accelerator. <laughs> Figure out how to swim. But when I got to Maryland, I was absolutely exhausted just swimming 100 yards or so. And, uh, I was a strong swimmer, so we lost I think, quite a few people in the water. And of course, we were being strafed. And I think those of us who went to Pearl Harbor at least speaking for myself, you cease to have any feelings of anticipation or fear. People ask me, were you afraid? I said, no, it's, it's not fear at all. It's something entirely different. Or you want to talk about it. It's, it's a fury beyond comprehension, and it doesn't go away. It still erupts if I go poking into that time period. Uh, I don't like to hate that much. You can do it. It was said by an Englishman, the only way you can ever understand anybody or a nation is to know their memories. And I said, the memories are getting away from us.
429 men are memorialized over there and their bodies are buried mostly in unknown graves simply because they were never identified. And uh, so I'm dedicated to keeping those memories alive. That's the reason I'm overjoyed for an opportunity to talk with you. And the reason I go back every year to take part in the ceremonies at Pearl Harbor, which are honoring the dead and the ships that uh, were sunk out there, as well as the people who stood their ground and, and did what fighting they could and lost to call us heroes. And we got our ship sunk in 15 minutes with 429 of the crew is kind of a stretch, but uh, uh, we all did what we were trained to do and could do. So that's what I'm, what I'm doing sitting right here right now, uh, remembering the Oklahoma and the guys who were killed and the guys who fought on for four more years.